Hey guys, we have in front of us the Sonos 5, which was released in June of 2020. Sonos says you can orientate it vertically or horizontally. So what we're going to try to find out today is, is there a sonic performance difference when you orientate it horizontally or vertically? Let's dive right in. So in my usual fashion, I would like to share with you the answer up front so that you don't have to stay on to watch the whole video if you don't have the time to. I know my videos can get a bit long, but today I promise it will be a short video. So the upfront summary is there is very little difference whether you orientate it either vertically or horizontally in terms of sonic performance from one speaker. If you have the time, I will dive right into the frequency response that I'm getting out of these guys when I place them horizontally and vertically so they can tell where the minor differences are. But the difference is small, so either you put it horizontally or vertically, you will be able to enjoy it. Just bear in mind that when it's placed horizontally, a single Sonos 5 is able to draw a stereo image. Whereas in vertical position, the single Sonos 5 is going to only throw out a sum image combining both the left and the right channel into a mono channel output. So what I did is I set this speaker up here. It's quite a distance away from the back wall. I know there's a shelf here but I have it clear of the shelf so it's not inside the cavity. It's a good maybe a foot and a half from the back wall here. The speaker is set about seven to seven and a half inches away from this U mic one. The U mic one is connected to my MacBook Pro and it's running the REW software where I will generate a frequency sweep and it will output the sound from this guy. The U mic one will pick it up and figure out what the and display the whole frequency response chart. So I have the frequency response chart loaded from here. You probably can't see it from the screen. I'll just throw it up here and you can take a look at it. So what I have here in red, the red curve represents the frequency response curve when the Sonos 5 is placed in a horizontal position, horizontal, like this, red. And this is for green. Oh, that's heavy. So the green curve represents the frequency response from the Sonos 5 when it's in a vertical position. This is not paired to a stereo pair, it is one single Sonos 5. So if you take a look at the green and the red curve, for most parts of the curve, you see that there isn't a very big appreciable difference. Now, of course, it depends on the scale that we are looking at, but if you look below 100, uh, maybe about 110 hertz, the green curve actually sits above the red curve for most parts. Meaning to say that below 110 hertz or so, the Sonos 5 in vertical orientation is actually giving out more output than the Sonos 5 in horizontal position. What is the reason behind that? I don't know. I'm just measuring it and telling you that in vertical position, it has more base output than when it is placed in the horizontal position. Now, from 110 hertz onwards, all the way up to the high range of the 20 kilohertz, you're going to be looking at uh, some swapping of positions around. There's a pretty big gap at about 1 kilohertz plus minus 2-300 hertz or so. And at that range, you see that it could be a phase difference. Uh, but what I would like to point out is that there is a possibility that the tweeters are actually messing up the imaging. Now, there are three tweeters inside the Sonos 5. The center one here faces forward and the ones at the side are angled out very aggressively. So when you put it in a vertical position, the tweeter on this side is firing upwards and the tweeter on this side is firing downwards and it will hit the tabletop and bounce off the waves. So that could explain some of the swapping and some of the messing up of the frequency response at the higher frequency range. The woofers are all front facing, so it doesn't really matter from there. But above 1800 hertz or so, you'll see that some of the frequency ranges are switching between being higher output or lower output than when it's placed in a horizontal position. So earlier in the summary, I've told you that when you place a Sonos 5 in the vertical position 
it defaults to a sum output, meaning to say it will take the left channel and it will take the right channel and combine them into a single mono output. So you won't be getting a stereo image if you are putting one single Sonos files in a vertical position. Now when you swap it and put it on the horizontal, in the horizontal position, so what you'll get is that that side of the speaker is going to be firing off the left image of your stereo and this side of the speaker is going to fire off the right channel of your stereo output. You will get a true stereo output just that the sound stage isn't as wide as if you were to place two discrete speakers with a good four to six feet apart. So most people, when they are not familiar with a Sonos 5 or a Play 5 for the matter, they will go out to the store and they will buy one Sonos 5 and they want to go home and test and see how it sounds like in their own homes. And that happened to me as well. A couple of years back, I bought a Sonos Play 5 Gen 2 back home. I just bought one speaker. I just want to test how it sounds like in my own home. When I turned it on, I was completely blown away by the sound and the bass that was coming from the Sonos Play 5. So the very next day, within 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, I was back at the store picking up another one to make a stereo pair. And I was happy with the Play 5 Gen 2s for quite a while until I moved on to the Sonos 5s. So don't make that mistake. You could save yourself a bit of time, a bit of petrol and a bit of transport costs by buying a pair at the same time. Trust me, very few people will stop at one when it comes to a Sonos 5 or it comes to any kind of Sonos speakers for that matter. Stereo discrete channels are always going to be better than one speaker. Even if the Sonos 5 is capable of projecting a stereo image from one enclosure itself, you will still want a stereo pair. The sum output is really, truly greater than the sum of its parts in this particular case. So when I say that the tweeters on this guy are angled aggressively to the left and the right to form their stereo image, what happens when you orientate it vertically, right? So I explained to you earlier that there's a possibility... Oh God, this is so heavy. I shouldn't talk and do this at the same time. Okay. Okay, done. So when you orientate it vertically, this tweeter here is going to throw the image up and this tweeter here is going to throw the image down. And surely they must confuse the sound staging and confuse the stereo imaging to the point that some of the higher frequencies might sound muffled and which could explain the strange swapping of high frequency outputs in the curves that I've shown you earlier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a recording of the output from the tweeters using the U mic one to measure the output levels and that might just give you some clue. So just bear with me, let me show you this recording. Alright, so what I have here is that I have a tone generator on the right of the screen. We can't see. Okay, here you go. So on the right of the screen, there's an online tone generator. I use this guy to play a very, very specific frequency output. And it is outputting it through the line out to the line in of the Sonos 5. And there is a loop back from the U mic 1 into my MacBook Pro, which will then display the frequency on this side of the screen. I'll start off with 22 Hz tone so that you can hear how it sounds like. Not sure if the mic is actually picking it up and whether you can hear it but I'm here and live it is audible. At 22 Hz it is an audible output. So let me change it to 30 Hz. This is a strong output. I am pretty sure that you can hear this and I can see that the mic levels are picking it up. Let's do this, all right? So let me teach you how to read this curve. If you look at the small box at the top, it will say that it is receiving a 30 hertz, it's measuring a 30 hertz tone, all right? So if you notice, I change this one step, 29 hertz. It will change to 29 hertz. One step, 28 hertz. It will change to 28 hertz. So it's a fairly accurate setup and it is picking up here at 90, 90, just a little over 90, 92, 91 dB or so. Okay. So this is to tell you that we can measure the output from the speaker in this way and you can see the curve. Now I'm going to default this to a range that will read up to 20 kilohertz. Now 
if I change this number, if I change the frequency output to uh, 14,000 hertz, you might still hear it, I'm not sure. Let's try that. I can hear a very high pitch tone, it is bordering on irritating and I'm not sure I can stand it much but from the curve, you will be able to see that it is actually peaking out somewhere here. Okay, and see, 14,000 hertz. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change this 18,000 hertz. All right. 18,000 hertz is less irritating for me. I hear less of it. There's still a very high pitch whine, but you can see that the output has dropped quite significantly. Now, I'm going to bring this mic out and I'm going to bring it up to the tweeter where the high frequencies are playing and you can see for yourself how high the level of output is. I'm going to put it right up to where the tweeter is. So this is the center tweeter. You can see that the output is actually very very high. 18,000 Hertz minus less than minus 1 dBFS. So if I move it to the left one which is somewhere here you see that the levels have dropped quite significantly. It is now at minus 14 dBFS. Okay, so the output is not as high as here, where it's quite close to 0 dBFS. And if you move to this side, the output is minus 7, 6. Still not as high as the center portion, center tweeter. So the reason why I'm running through this is to show you, to tell you that the output from the center tweeter is actually significantly higher, maybe two, an order of two or three times higher than the side tweeters. So when you place it in vertical orientation, the output from these two side firing tweeters, they are lower, so it doesn't mess up the image as much. And from a human listening standpoint, you're going to land emphasis, you're going to pick out those higher output frequencies and you will kind of like filter out or ignore the lower output frequencies. So this one, even if it bounces around off the ceiling, off the top of the table, it's not going to impact the sound imaging as much, even though they are firing sideways. Now then the question is, what happens when you rotate it and put it back in the horizontal position? Do they then still raise the output of the side firing tweeters? Let's find out. So same thing, let's keep looking at the chart here. Center minus 1 dBFS, the output is pretty high. Now I move to the sides, minus 10 to minus, minus 8 here. Move to this side, minus 12, minus 10, minus 9, minus 8. Okay. So the side firing tweeters, even in horizontal positioning, is not much higher than if they were in vertical positioning. The output from the side tweeters are still going to be lower in comparison to the center tweeter. So the imaging is still going to be straight on and forward firing. Okay, so I hope that answers some question and it gives you a bit of clues. Okay, so there we have it. The output from the side firing tweeters are not as high as the front firing tweeter in the middle of the Sonos 5s. So this is unlikely to smear your imaging even if you were to place the speaker vertically and you are worried that the waves are going to bounce off the top of the table or bounce off the ceiling. It is not going to be impactful enough for you to have that as a consideration. So now the question is what I will be doing. I actually like the look of the Sonos speakers, the Sonos 5s when it's placed horizontally. So the only problem is that you, it is hard to find a speaker stand that will fit a speaker that is this wide and of this form factor. Most speaker stands will accommodate speakers that are rectangular but you know taller than they are wide or deep. This one is wider than it is tall. So it's a bit hard to fit. And the rubber, uh, the, the rubber stoppers at the bottom of the speakers, they're not going to fit on the top plate of a speaker stand very, very well. So if you want to put it on a speaker stand, likelihood is that you have to place it vertically. So don't worry about the image, uh, the stereo image uh, smudging or smearing because the tweeters are firing. As we have shown in the test, it doesn't. So what I will be doing is I will be placing the speakers still on a countertop or depending on where I deploy them, but I don't have the speaker stands for this right now. And what I'll do is I'll probably lift it up a little bit so that the bass drivers doesn't hit the tabletop. 
So while there is less output and the tweeters are actually higher, you don't have to worry about them reflecting off the tabletop. The base drivers are actually sitting lower and it will reflect across the tabletop if it is too close to the tabletop. And the base drivers are really actually quite low. So lift it up. If I could put some books underneath, if it is not so pretty, buy some foam paddings and put it underneath. And I probably won't have to angle the speakers because there are still side firing tweeters. So how I've been listening to these guys is that they have been serving my real channel speakers function in my Sonos Arc setup. But occasionally I do decouple them and I use them as stereo speakers to enjoy stereo sounds through these speakers. And they do a fabulous, wonderful job at music. So there you have it, a pair of Sonos 5s or the Play 5 Gen 2. They, no matter what orientation and no matter how you deploy them, they are likely to land you in some very, very happy places. So don't sweat the small differences. I've shown you the differences, but they are more for journalistic purposes. However you deploy them, they are going to sound great. So I go through the signs and I tell you the small, tiny differences. There will be a group of you out there where these kind of small differences matter to you. And if it does, I hope to have helped you answer some of these questions. And on the contrary, if I find something that will impact your listening pleasure significantly, I will say it as it is. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And for those of you who have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do consider subscribing. You will notice that I seldom go through the specifications or the feature set that you can read off a website. I actually analyze wireless audio products. I dig very, very deep. I test them extensively, exhaustively, and hope to share with you what I find out from there. And I'm pretty sure no one else on YouTube is going in depth as deep as I am into the Sonos ecosystem. So again, if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Leave a like for the video and while you're at it, drop a comment in the comment section below and let us know how you are using your Sonos Play 5 or your Sonos 5s. If for some reason you find my work very, very useful and you are happy to contribute to my coffee fund, I will put up a QR up here. This QR, you can scan it with your mobile phone and it will bring you to my Patreon account where you can contribute a small amount towards my coffee fund. And for those of you who are lazy to scan this, you can also click the link that I've placed in the video description down below. I'll see you in my next video.